This lesson is going to focus on uh, writing with descriptive elements or writing with style. So um, your writing style will greatly improve if you choose words that fit the purpose of your writing. So the best words are contributing very effectively and actively to the meaning, feeling, and sound in a piece of writing. Um, providing an effective and engaging description does not come from adding more words to your writing. Instead, great writers pay special attention to the nouns, verbs, and modifiers. Modifiers are adjectives and adver adverbs. These are the words that make your writing come alive. So we're going to look at the guidelines below, um, which will help you use strong and colorful words in all of your writing. So, First, you want to choose specific nouns. Some nouns are general, nouns like car or house, animal, and general nouns give the reader a fuzzy picture in their head. The more specific the noun, the clearer the picture the reader will have. It will ha the reader will have a more detailed picture. So, replacing the word car with minivan or pickup truck or SUV or four-wheeler gives the reader a different image in their head with each one of those nouns. And replacing house with cabin or treehouse or igloo. Again, you get a different picture in your head. Animal versus skunk. Um, and so when you use specific nouns, you have don't have to use as many modifiers. General nouns force you to use a lot of modifiers, a lot of adjectives to describe them. So if we look at this chart, nouns are um, a person, place, thing, or idea. Um, the, this row is the most general. So we have uh, a woman. More specific would be a writer. Very specific would be Lois Lowry. Uh, place might be a monument. And more specific would be a national monument, very specific Statue of Liberty. Food versus snack food versus popcorn. Popcorn being the most specific. Government, a one-person government, and a monarchy. When you write with specific nouns, your writing will have more energy. So you're, you're trying to write with this last row down here, the Lois Lowry, Statute of Liberty, Popcorn, and Monarchy row. Those are the types of nouns you want in your writing. Next, you want to choose vivid verbs. I you know you've heard this expression before, but what does that actually mean? Well, action-packed verbs make your life your writing interesting. So if we look at verbs such as surveyed, glared, observed, spied, and inspected, they all say more than the overused verb looked. Okay. So typically in your writing, especially in a rough draft, and that's fine, you might write with the word looked. When you're revising or editing your writing, Words, uh, verbs like looked, you want to replace with the more specific or vivid verb to convey the correct meaning. So, for example, the statement Miss Lang glared at the disruptive students is much more descriptive than Miss Lang looked at the disruptive students. It gives a different feel to the writing, a different image in the, in the reader's head, a different feeling to the reader, and you didn't have to add a lot of adverbs to looked to convey it. It was simply changing out the verb to something more specific. In your writing, you want to try and avoid the be verbs. Is, am, are, was, and were. You don't want to use them too often. There will be times when we use them. We, they're the most common verbs in our language. You're going to use them. But many times, a better verb can be made from another word in the sentence. So, for example, we have a sentence using a be verb, Rosa is a persuasive speaker in debates. We can make that sentence better, more vivid, by removing is and writing Rosa speaks persuasively in debates. This is a much stronger verb. It's a much stronger sentence. So again, when we're revising and editing our writing, 
we're going to find lots of places where you use is or am or are and you want to try and find the places in your writing as it won't be everywhere but there will be some places where you could go oh I can say speaks instead of is a persuasive speaker um, speaks persuasively is better and make those changes in that stage you also want to choose effective modifiers. So we want to look at adjectives first. So we're looking for colorful adjectives to describe the nouns. Um, strong adjectives make your noun more interesting and clear. Again, we're just trying to make a clear image to the reader. So you may tell your readers, Bo is a farm dog. However, if you tell them that he is a bossy but hardworking farm dog, they'll have a much clearer idea of who Bo is by adding bossy but hardworking. Um, you want to avoid adjectives that are used so frequently they carry little meaning. Okay, overused adjectives include neat, big, pretty, small, cute, fun, bad, nice, good, dumb, great, and funny. So anywhere you see any of these words in your writing, we want to try and replace them with something that has a more specific meaning to it. Adverbs um, will help you describe the action in a sentence. And not every verb is going to be um, an action verb. And not all action verbs need an adverb. However, sometimes they can add clarity. So, for example, if we add barely to this sentence, we barely squeeze through the subway door before it slid shut. Um, it gives a different uh, and clearer image to the action that's happening than just we squeeze through the subway door. However, you don't want to use an adverb with a verb if you could replace both with a single vivid verb. So, for example, Joan sat quickly on the whoopee cushion. There's nothing wrong with that sentence. You've added an adverb quickly to your verb sat. However, sat is a very generic verb, and telling me she sat quickly doesn't help as much as saying Joan plopped on the whoopee cushion. Um, that, when you use the word plopped instead, placing both sat and quickly, we have an even better image in our head. And finally, as you're looking through and trying to choose words to replace um, boring or overused words in your writing, you want to make sure that you have the word that you're choosing has the right feeling or connotation. Okay, connotation is the subtle subtlety of the word. So um, for example, let's say you're writing about a dream, and this dream happens to scare you every time you think about it. Well, then you can't simply call it a dream, nor could you call it a fantasy or a vision or an omen. Those words don't have the right connotation, they don't have the right feeling. If you're thinking about a dream that scares you, you're talking about a nightmare. So nightmare would be the word that has that right feeling to it in your writing. So sometimes when you're looking through a thesaurus, you just pick a word because it's a synonym. Not all synonyms work. Not all synonyms that are listed have that right connotation to your writing. So pick a word you're familiar with that you understand its connotation and is exactly what you want to say. If you're unsure, you can always ask me for help. I'm happy to clarify the connotation of any words. 